The Roaring Twenties were marked by a convergence of technological innovation, cultural dynamism, and economic prosperity, setting the stage for transformative changes across various facets of society. The rise of automobiles, radio's introduction to everyday life, and the evolution of motion pictures as a mainstream form of entertainment played pivotal roles in shaping the cultural landscape of the time, reflecting and influencing the aspirations and values of a rapidly modernizing nation. Welcome back to Compelling History. In the fourth episode of our four-part journey through the Roaring Twenties, we'll be taking a look at three areas which experienced an explosion in popularity during this decade. Make sure you're subscribed to stay tuned for the upcoming episodes, and don't forget to like this video to help support the channel. Part 1. Automobiles The automobile revolutionized American life following the First World War. Prior to the war, automobiles were an unreliable novelty, out of reach for most people due to their extravagant price tag. This began to change during the Roaring Twenties, when advancements in manufacturing contributed to a lowering in price, coinciding with an economic boom. Automobiles became a symbol of freedom and adventure, allowing people the liberty to go wherever they wanted at their own pace. Wealthy individuals and organizations funded the construction of new infrastructure to support the growing popularity of automobiles among the richest members of society. However, it wasn't just the elites. In 1921, the United States passed the Federal Aid Highway Act, allocating funds for the development of national highway systems, which laid the groundwork for the extensive road networks that would later connect the country. So how did automobiles become the dominant means of transportation? To understand why automobiles dominated as a means of transportation during the Roaring Twenties, we first need to go back seven years to 1913, when Henry Ford introduced the assembly line at his plant in Highland Park, Detroit. The assembly line divided production into discrete tasks, with each worker responsible for a specific part of the overall process. This ensured that each worker could focus on their assigned task, leading to greater efficiency and productivity. Workers had a station along a conveyor belt, which would carry the automobile's chassis down the line, stopping at each station for that worker to do their part on the automobile's overall construction. This system allowed for a smooth flow of work and minimized idle time, dramatically increasing the rate of production. A key element to the assembly line was the standardization of parts used in the manufacturing of Ford automobiles. The use of identical parts and components ensured they were easily interchangeable between models both during and after production. The production of one automobile was able to take full advantage of assembly line, the Model T. The accessibility of the Model T and other automobiles during the Roaring Twenties changed American life forever. Part 2. Radio Broadcasting Radio communication began in the late 19th century, when Guglielmo Marconi developed the first radio transmitter capable of sending Morse code over long distances. By 1901, he would be able to transmit Morse code across the Atlantic. Technological advancements continued, and by the end of World War I, companies could leverage improved radio technology for commercial broadcasting, notably commencing with the 1920 election between Warren G. Harding and James Cox. Just in time to cover the election, the first commercial radio radio station KDKA opened its doors in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. KDKA began broadcasting news, music, and variety shows besides election coverage. Other stations soon followed suit, cropping up in cities across the United States. The proliferation of radio stations across the country gave rise to the start of mass communication of news, ideas, and trends, which profoundly shaped American culture. For the first time in history, individuals in a region could instantly receive important information or general updates from their home instantaneously, regardless of location. Listeners could tune into breaking news reports and live coverage of important events, enhancing their sense of immediacy and connection to a larger world. Radio also provided an avenue for illiterate individuals in remote areas to gain a better understanding of both local and national affairs. As mentioned in the first video in this series, consumerism exploded during the Roaring Twenties, and this was partly aided by the opportunities radio broadcasting presented to advertisers. Companies often sponsored radio programs to promote their products or services during breaks, or even integrated them into the program itself. These early sponsorships marked the dawn of the intertwining of the media and advertising industries during the nascent stages of commercial broadcasting. However, programs of this era weren't merely advertisements for their sponsors 
dancers. These programs would be basically live stage productions in various genres. Among the most popular radio shows of the Roaring Twenties were The Goldbergs, a radio comedy drama series created by Gertrude Berg, which followed the daily life of a Jewish family living in the Bronx, New York and Amos and Andy, a comedy following two African-American friends living and going on adventures in Harlem, which would become one of the era's most popular and influential radio programs. As radio's popularity soared during the Roaring Twenties, a cultural homogenization swept across America. People from diverse regions and demographics shared common experiences through radio events or breaking news bulletins. Popular music, entertainment programs, and advertising campaigns were broadcast nationwide, shaping this shared cultural identity and consumer culture. The growth of radio, like any new technology, inevitably necessitated regulation to control the booming industry. 1927 would see the establishment of the Federal Radio Commission when the Radio Act was signed into law in February of that year, replacing a previous act from 1912 which had no commission overseeing it. This act outlined how radio frequencies would be distributed for commercial use and the standards for broadcasting on these frequencies. Part 3. Motion Pictures the Roaring Twenties marked a pivotal era for cinema, catalyzing its evolution into a mainstream form of entertainment that resonated with audiences across diverse socioeconomic backgrounds. As working-class families and individuals found themselves drawn to the allure of the silver screen, cinema emerged as a unifying cultural force, offering a captivating escape from the realities of everyday life. The emergence of major studios like MGM, Paramount, and Warner Brothers played a crucial role in this transformation as they churned out a steady stream of films that captivated audiences with their diverse themes and genres. These studios not only catered to the entertainment needs of the masses, but also spearheaded technological advancements that revolutionized the cinematic experience. One such milestone was the introduction of sound films during the mid to late 1920s, a groundbreaking innovation that forever changed the landscape of cinema. Films like The Jazz Singer, released in 1927, marked a seismic shift by seamlessly integrating music, singing, and recorded speech into feature-length productions. This technological leap not only enhanced the realism of films, but also imbued them with a newfound emotional resonance, propelling cinema into its golden age. Beyond mere entertainment, movies of the era served as a powerful medium for exploring pressing social issues of the time. Productions such as The Sheik, 1921, and It, 1927, challenged conventional norms surrounding gender and sexuality, portraying independent and assertive female characters that defied stereotypes. This thematic exploration added depth to the cinematic experience, fostering meaningful dialogue and reflection on the societal changes unfolding during the tumultuous 20s. Moreover, the transition from silent to sound films enabled filmmakers to tackle a broader array of social issues, ranging from poverty and immigration to racial tensions. While silent films relied primarily on visual storytelling techniques, the advent of sound opened up new avenues for narrative expression, allowing filmmakers to engage audiences on a deeper level. The cultural and economic impact of cinema during the Roaring Twenties extended far beyond the confines of the movie theater. Hollywood's rise as a global hub for talent and creativity not only fueled the growth of ancillary industries like advertising, fashion, and tourism, but also solidified its status as an economic powerhouse. The studio system, characterized by vertically integrated production, distribution, and exhibition, further maximized the earnings of major film studios, consolidating their dominance in the burgeoning entertainment landscape. The Roaring Twenties marked a transformative period for cinema, shaping its trajectory into a dominant cultural force that continues to influence society to this day. Through technological innovation, thematic exploration, and economic expansion, the cinema of the 20s laid the foundation for the vibrant and dynamic industry that we know today. Conclusion Thank you so much for watching the third episode of Compelling History series on the Roaring Twenties. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Next week, we'll be concluding this series with a look at the event which put an end to this era of prosperity, the stock market crash of 1929.